Boten där det har presenterat året som den prisdagare i musik. Jag heter Gunnar Ökvist och jag är ständningssekreterare här i Vetenskapsakademin. Och med mig har jag här till vänster om mig är professor Per Karlsson eh, som är ordförande i Nobelkommittén för fysik. Och till höger om mig så har vi professor Lars Bergström som är sekreterare i, i Nobelkommittén för fysik. Just to start the announcement in English first, please note uh, that I will start with the announcement in Swedish, but we will then continue the press conference in English, and then during the, the, the later on you can pose questions in any of the languages, Swedish or English. Ordens Nobel Prize är det belönat arbete som ligger så långt tillbaka i tiden så långt var vi inne som till universums barndom. Och Kungliga Vetenskapsakademin har beslutat att 2006 års Nobelpris i fysik utdelas gemensamt till John Mather och George Smoot för upptäckten av den kosmiska vapenstrålningens fackkroppsform och anisotropi. Jag ska säga att båda prisdagarna har sin hemlighet i USA och Mather arbetar i NASA Gordon Space Flight Center i Greenland, Maryland och professor Smoot är verksam i Lånens Böke National Laboratory men också i University of California i Berkeley. I will now make the announcement in English. This year's Nobel Prize in Physics is awarded for work that looks back into the infancy of the universe. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the Nobel Prize in Physics for the year 2006 jointly to John Mather and George Smoot. And they get the prize for their discovery of the black body form and anisotropy of the cosmic microwave background radiation. And both of the laureates are from the US. Dr. Matter works at NASA for the Space Flight Center in Greenland, Maryland, and Professor Smoot is active at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and the University of California in Berkeley. And uh, Professor Lord Bergstrom will now give us a short introduction to the Please come in. Thank you. <coughs> well, this the uh, two laureates of this year have really helped us to find the missing link in cosmology. And also they have found a fantastic tool to make detailed measurements of the universe when it was very young and much simpler than today. So I will try in a few slides just to explain what this is about. So I will start with a picture from NASA. This is from the Hubble Space Telescope. And this is showing some of the furthest galaxies that have ever been taken on, on picture. So some of these galaxies are millions, well, some even billions of light years away. So that is the key, I think, to the prize of today, that by looking out in space, we also look back in time, because time takes, uh, light takes time to travel. So by looking at this first object, we see how the universe was a long time ago. Now, we all see that this picture as a background has the black sky. But it turns out that if we humans do not have ordinary eyes for ordinary life, that we have microwave detectors, we had satellite dishes, let's say, had eyes, we wouldn't think that the sky is dark. We would be blinded by the light that comes like from a wall from us away, the microwave background radiation. And maybe it's a little bit clearer on this picture, because here we have tried to summarize in, in just one picture what, where this radiation comes from, 
and what has happened since it was committed. So of course uh, we have a horizon. We cannot see arbitrarily far in the universe because the universe has only existed 13.7 billion years according to the most recent estimate. So uh, at time zero, we cannot really say anything. That is the sort of moment of the Big Bang, and we don't have scientific theories to describe that moment. But we know now, uh, thanks to these discoveries, that the universe started out as a very hot and compressed plasma. So after 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the conditions were rather simple uh, and also rather interesting. So the light waves that were emitted at that time, they should have been represented by very hot light, this blinding light that comes from everywhere. And as you can see in this picture, as the universe expands, these light waves stretch so that the visible light that we would expect from this glowing wall of, of hot plasma now have turned into microwaves. So that's the key to observing this radiation. And this whole picture uh, coincides with what one gets by studying Einstein's general theory of relativity as tested, for instance, by the double pulsar that got the Nobel Prize for its discovery in Nobel Prize 1993. Uh, of course, there is a non-trivial connection between the density fluctuations and the temperature anisotropy measured by COVID. And those uh, calculations were carried out by Sachs and Wolf in the 1960s. I should also say before leaving this picture that <coughs> we have additional confirmation of this uh, Big Bang scenario, namely that uh, according to, to this uh, theory, the first elements that were created were hydrogen, 76%, and 24% helium, and traces of deuterium and lithium. And that agrees very well with measurements of the elements out in the cosmos. Of course, the heavier elements that we are made up of were produced later when galaxies started to form. And as you see in this picture, well, that part is in Swedish actually, that happened around a billion years after the Big Bang. So, the uh, amazing discovery of the virus experiment on board COVID was this curve. This very simple looking and actually described in a simple mathematical way by Max Planck, one of the first Nobel laureates. He got the Nobel Prize in 1918. And that is essentially a proof that at the time of emission, the universe, the source of this radiation, must have been very hot and compressed. And by studying this radiation, we can tell about the properties of the universe when it was only 380,000 years old, and it was much simpler than today. So this has become a fantastically useful tool for studying cosmology. Uh, so the other part that the largely um, George Smoot was responsible for uh, has to do with fluctuations. So one first sees an intense heat. So this wall one sees in all directions. And that's the uppermost figure on this plot. One can easily nowadays let the computer subtract that homogeneous, very intense radiation. And one finds small variation, one half in a thousand, which is a dipole in the middle picture here. And that is due to our galaxies moving through the rest of the universe with respect to the rest of the universe. And that can also be subtracted. Let the computer do that, or that's what the COBEL collaboration did, and they found these 